Hi folks, this is Roger from Wolfgrid Van Life, and um, we wanted to uh, take you through uh, basically a product review of this uh, Juntec VAT 1200 shunt or smart shunt. I'm not sure whether they call it a smart shunt or just a shunt. Anyway, the uh, in the box you have uh, the following. You have the shunt itself, uh, which has got this, I'll show you some stuff in this cover, but it's, uh, this is horrible, horrible, this cover. Anyway, the shunt itself, which uh, as anybody knows, uh, you attach your negative uh, line to the, the shunt. So this basically goes to your battery, this goes to your system. And uh, this is a resistor which drops the voltage slightly and uh, as you draw more and more amps they can do the maths to figure out what the average is. Uh, you'd put in a positive line in the second one there, oh, I think it's the first one there. Uh, so you put a positive line in there and that's how it operates, where it gets its power from. Uh, these are 8mm bolts and um, yep, I'll get to the cover shortly but let's just talk about everything else in the box. You've got a temperature sensor, uh, which will plug in, I think, over here. Temperature sensor plugs in here. And um, you can power the, well, this is the display. And uh, it is powered either from this uh, USB cable, and the USB cable can be plugged into the, uh, the shunt itself, the shunt unit. So then if you plug it in this way, it doesn't uh, run wirelessly. It runs uh, essentially cabled, but you can plug this into something else, in which case it will run wirelessly. That'll connect wirelessly. And the nice thing about this is that it is wireless. So you can have this some distance away in the van. If you don't want to use a USB, you can always use this little a cable that they provide and you can attach uh, 12 volt to to this and power this from 12 volt so <clears throat> that's uh, I, I won't take you through uh, the minutia of detail of uh, the fact that you can drive shunt um, relays etc from here so there are a few things you can do you can change it from a two wire to a three wire format and uh, do various things run relays and stuff like that so it it is in theory quite powerful. Um, there is a fundamental problem with this though um, and before we get to the problem let's talk about the cover. The cover is one of the things that really bugs me about this but we can work around that. So you can't get a socket into these holes to tighten this once it's on. Uh, so you actually what we do when we know that the shunt is working we actually drill this out with a, with a um, wide 20 mil bit and then you can get something in. The other thing is, as you can see on this one here, this is actually a 50 amp, um, you can see getting the cables through here is very, very difficult. They make it really difficult to get these cables on here. So we actually do a modification to these to uh, get the cables in easily, but anyway. Let's talk about the big problem on this here. I'm going to flick you over to a video that I made uh, which explains how uh, the, each cycle the uh, shunt will go out more and more and so you need to understand that theory then I'll explain it, actually show it to you practically. So let's uh, <clears throat> look at what is actually happening and, uh, and just talk through it and, and try and figure this out. So. Um, before we even get into this, let's talk about a challenge that is faced by all manufacturers of Coulomb counters and uh, of smart shunts and Hall effect sensors and any, any of these devices that uh, monitor what's going out of your battery and coming back in and what you should therefore have left. That is the most efficient way of, or the best way of knowing what state of charge is in your battery for a number of reasons that I won't go into now. Um, but they all face the same problem. And the problem is that, or the challenge is that when you start with a completely full battery and you discharge it completely, and then you charge it back up again, you always put more in than you took out. So if you discharged your battery and counted 280 amps coming out of it, and then you charge it back up to a full state of charge, 
you will put more in than you took out. And there are a number of reasons for that, including um, you know, the fact that you actually charge up to 14.6 and then the battery comes back to rest at 13.3 you know, or whatever. Uh, the certain chemistries are worse than others. Lead acid is really inefficient. Um, but let's all agree that when you totally discharge and recharge a battery, you put more back into it than you took out to bring it to 100% state of charge. So now that we've agreed on that, what is happening with the, uh, in this particular case, the Gentech VAT 1200 shunts. And uh, the fundamental problem is that they are not taking this into account. They used to in previous models. It's as if a software developer worked on something and introduced a bug and it's, it's whoops, and there's a bug in there. And um, but interestingly, we have reached out to Vision Tech manufacturers. They refuse to talk to us. They've told us to go back to the sellers of these shunts and we bought a whole bunch of Alibaba. And um, uh, the uh, the seller is not really interested. They, they saying they'd like to train us how to use it. So let me explain this whole thing to you. We start with our battery is a 280 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery, fully charged. It's come to rest at 13.3 or whatever, 13.4. And um, it's had a 100% state of charge, zero amp hours drawn reported by the shunt. We're happy with that. So we start discharging and we discharge 280 amp hours from the battery, meets its capacity. And the shunt at that stage correctly says we are 0% state of charge and we have drawn 280 amp hours from the battery. Happy so far, we all look in agreement. Now we charge the battery back up again. It takes 280 amp hours and continues going. Remember I said you always put back a bit more than you took out. So we've We've put back in 280 and it keeps on going. In fact, it goes to 287. So what happens is that the shunt counts back down from the 280 that it reached there. It counts to zero and then continues to count down till it reaches minus seven there. So for the second cycle, the battery is fully charged again, 100% state of charge, and the shunt is showing zero, seven amp hours drawn. When you start discharging, and here is the problem with the Jantec VAT 1200, when you start discharging, it first needs to count the minus seven back to zero, and then it starts counting a positive amp hours drawn, and it will stop at 273 amp hours drawn, which is the capacity of the cells. The BMS probably cuts it off, and it will report a 2.5% state of charge at that point now it has actually, the battery has discharged 280 amp hours. So actually this is incorrect. 273 is incorrect, firstly. Secondly, the 2.5% state of charge reported by the shunt is incorrect. They are both incorrect. So you charge it back up again. And here you see the frightening thing. The, uh, the problem is cumulative each cycle. So we were minus seven there, we were minus 14 here, we'll be minus 21 the next cycle in cycle four, 100% instead of charge, minus 14 to discharge. We count back from minus 14 to zero, then start counting a positive amount. And we finally, the shunt reaches 266 amp hours. So 266 plus 14 is 280, obviously. And the shunt is reporting a 5% state of charge at the end of that discharge process, which is incorrect. It should be zero and that should be 280. We fast forward uh, to cycle number 40, and here you can see the real problem. Without human intervention, we reach cycle number 40, and we know that we start with 100% state of charge because we've charged the battery. The shunt is reporting minus 280 amp hours drawn. Really? So we start discharging, so it counts 279, 278, etc., etc. It's 100% so instead of charge the whole time, counting back down to until we get to zero. And then we have actually depleted the battery. The battery, the shunt is showing 100% instead of charge. The battery is 0% instead of charge. The shunt is showing that we drew zero amp hours. 
we actually drew 280 amp hours out of this. So the fundamental problem with the Zhentec VAT1200, and which wasn't a problem in previous models and in the 50 amp that we've tried is not a problem. The fundamental problem is that when they reach zero here and here, they should stop counting. And they used to stop counting. But now for some reason, they carry on counting and they introduce this uh, cumulative error that just gets worse and worse. So that, to all intents and purposes, makes the shunt um, pretty useless for us. You would have to manually reset this every day for it to make sense. Uh, it's just not feasible. In a, in a motorhome, you're continually drawing and charging at the same time. You, know, you need the shunt to be measuring it and then finally when it gets to its full state of charge when you're driving or whatever, it can, it, it kind of resets itself if they stop counting at zero here. Yeah. So we start at 100% state of charge. As you can see, we're at 13.3 volts on the battery, uh, currently zero amps, zero watts. Uh, the discharge is zero, 0, 0.000 amp hours and no watt hours drawn. So basically, uh, this uh, that's been on for just over a minute and just doing nothing. So let's uh, start drawing some power. So we turn the inverter on, and straight away you'll see 0 0.9 or so amps being drawn, just for the inverter to be on standby. So it started to draw uh, current from the battery or some charge from the battery. So I'm going to put um, a fan heater on on its first setting just to uh, start drawing some uh, charge from the battery and so there we go so we we only going to draw at this stage uh, 77 amps so the count uh, let this count the you can see the discharge it's starting to count up 0 0.3 whatever amp hours so that's what is being drawn. Uh, that is what has been drawn off the battery is stated as a positive amp hours drawn off the battery. So it's showing a positive current being drawn off the battery and same with watts. And uh, yeah, we're, we're fine with that showing uh, 0 0.7. So that's what is drawn off the battery. If I just turn the fan heater off, and I'll turn the, the inverter off just so that it stops if I can find the switch. So everything has stopped drawing now. You can see we're sitting at uh, 0.898, I think it is, uh, amp hours drawn, certain amount of watt hours drawn. So that's what we've drawn out of the battery. So these shunts display a positive amount that you've drawn off the battery. So let's turn our charger on now. Um, and would have loved to have taken this to 280 amp hours in the back, but uh, in the interest of time, let's just turn this charger back on again. So we're going to charge, um, we're charging at about uh, 50 amps at the moment. So as you can see, it now shows a negative amps uh, going through the system. That just happens to be the way that they show that. That's fine. We can live with that. Uh, so it's positive amps when you're drawing off the battery, negative amps when you're putting back into the battery. That's okay. The This is now showing a charge uh, that is being charged and it's currently at 0, 0 0.4 something amp hours. Um, the watt hours is carrying on climbing up. That's fine. Uh, it shows watts increasing when you charge and discharge. You can live with that. I actually ignore the watt hours. I'm more interested in amp hours in the total instead of charge of the battery. So we've got to uh, 0, 1, 5 something. As you can see, the amp hours is counting down to zero. And in a few seconds, minus. And it carries on counting into a minus figure. So this, this is the fundamental problem. The Juntex used to stop when they reached zero and for some reason they've changed the software and uh, that makes this pretty much unusable. In my opinion, it's completely unusable because you've seen it's counting into a negative. So if I just turn the charger off to stop 
figures moving, we've gone to zero amps, zero watts, but basically we are now sitting at a zero amp hours drawn, which is theoretically not possible. You can't draw a negative amount from the battery, you can only draw power from the battery. The problem with this, as I've explained in, in the previous part of the video, the problem with this is when we start discharging, uh, it's going to need to count back that negative. So let me actually show that to you. So there we are, we have the inverter on, and as you can see, it's starting to count back very slowly because we are in such a bit, let's turn the power on a bit. And you can see there, it's now counting back to zero. And once, only once it reaches zero will the state of charge be affected. So the amount that we've changed it by is too, too little to actually see that. You see it's reached zero and now it's heading in positive. So let me turn that off again. Stop the figures moving so I can explain that. The fundamental problem is that each cycle that negative will get bigger and bigger until in theory it's going to reach the whole 280 amp hours that uh, the battery has stored and when you discharge it will need to use that up first before the main state of charge indicator is affected and that means that when when you finally reach the point where it's showing negative 280 amp hours drawn that will always only show 100 percent it will never show anything less than 100 percent which obviously is absolutely rubbish so in a nutshell uh, whilst we really enjoyed the first ones that we tried of these and the 50 amp ones we currently have these 200 amp Gentec shunts are we think not fit for purpose uh, we would not recommend them because they count into a negative amp hours drawn. I mean, they come in a nice little box with nice uh, padding. Uh, it's a very elementary little guide. Uh, it doesn't even show you how to get into the hidden menus or anything like that uh, to calibrate it properly and that sort of thing. So uh, the problems I have with this, uh, there are three major problems. Firstly, this uh, guide is really not worth much it's it's too there's not enough detail in there uh, secondly these covers are terrible the way that you put these on and the way that you have to undo things here to get to the bolts underneath and that these covers are terrible we actually when we've used them we've needed to modify them and that works fine but the covers are terrible but the main thing is it counts into a negative amp hours drawn. It should not do that. And each cycle it gets worse and worse until eventually, no matter what you have actually drawn out of your battery, it will only show you 100% state of charge, which is completely useless. What's the point of this? The whole idea is to know what your state of charge is. And uh, so do we recommend this shunt? Unfortunately, Juntec shunts at this stage, the 200 amp shunts, we do not recommend. They are not fit for purpose.